Greetings, lovely humans. We're going to talk about Windward. I'm wearing this scarf and it has a very special story. In 2015, I took a schoolie that I had converted into an RV and I drove it around the country with the notion that I would get in touch with my family and the nation at large. I would get out of the little bubble of Seattle and start connecting with people out on the road. And to my delight, one of the things that came out of that trip was reuniting with a long lost cousin who's living in Santa Fe. And this reunion was one of those moments where you don't skip a beat. You remember your dynamic, you remember all the old lines. And I thought I'd be in Santa Fe for a day and I ended up in Santa Fe for a week. And as a parting gift, my cousin gave me this delightful scarf and she knit this scarf. at her mother's bedside when she was in a coma right before she passed away. People don't think about it very much, but that's the power of making things. Oh my gosh, did I just make you super uncomfortable by bursting into tears right there? It's all right. It's okay, we're gonna feel all the feels. That's what creation is all about. It's not fast fashion. It's not running up to the store when you're bored or distracted or getting online and just adding crap to your shopping cart. It takes time. It's all of these deliberate decisions that lead up to a moment where you take something off the needles or step away from the saw or put down the hammer. And in that time, as it passes, we are there together. We're on the journey while we're making. And all of that life, our joys and our sorrows, get poured into our work and they're imbued with our essence, with our souls. It's not something I ran out to the store and bought. This is real. My cousin sat by her mother's bedside and made this scarf. And then after years of separation, we were reunited and as a parting gift, as a talisman, she gave that part of her life to me. And that's amazing. So I don't just wear this, I take her with me and I take that moment of her life with me. So I'm going to teach you guys, oh, got myself all red from being teary eyed. I'm going to teach you guys about this scarf. I spent, well, it was 2015. So I spent from 2015 to 2019, I spent four years looking for this pattern. Bets couldn't remember the pattern. I would walk into yarn shops all over the country as I was traveling. Hey, look at this pattern. Do you guys know this pattern? And inevitably they say, well, I recognize the yarn. It's a sock yarn, um, but I don't know the pattern. We can't find the pattern. I even went so far as to rebuild the pattern myself. And then I was out on Ravelry one day and I found it. And it's turned into one of my favorite patterns for the simple fact that not only do I love the asymmetry of the scarf and kind of the funny little ends and the fabulous little texture changes, but it's a great scarf for an advanced beginner. So if you're looking, if you've gotten really used to knitting and you can knit and you can purl, if you can make one right, make one left, although you can do it with the same hand, um, uh, knit two together, right? Slip, slip, knit, bind off, cast on. It's really all you need to know how to do. It's garter stitch, it's stockinette stitch, which turns into reverse stockinette, but it's just knits and purls with some increases and some decreases. And the result is this magical pattern that you can use for just about anything. You can do what Betts did and go out and buy yarn specific to the pattern and get this beautiful, elegant design. Or you can do what I do and grab all of those ends, all of those remnants, all of those little tiny weird goo and balls that you've got left over from other projects and turn it into the scarf. So stick with me. We're gonna go through the pattern. I'm gonna show you some examples. And believe me, before we're done, you're gonna to wanna to give this a shot. Windward was designed by Heidi Kermayer in cooperation with Malabrigo, one of my favorite fiber companies. But that's for another episode. 
You can find the pattern on Ravelry for $6 USD, but it's also included a book for just $4 more. Yes, buy the pattern. Heidi's hard work is worth the price of a drive through order. If you scroll through all the samples online, you'll see Windward can be wonderfully versatile and elegant, especially if you used it as designed. Planning ahead leads to some wonderful color play, and the right fiber will really highlight the simple, textural contrast. For that six bucks, you get an endless array of possibility. Before we go on, let's do a little business. As always, I am unaffiliated with the products I review. I just do this because I love it and I love other fiber artists. Subscribe, like, leave comments, tap that little bell if you want notifications so you never miss an episode. And above all, remember, let's be kind and respectful to one another. Let's talk materials. This is a pattern designed for sock yarn. It's meant to be worked on 3.5 millimeter, that's US size 4, knitting needles. It requires 575 yards, that's 525 meters, which means the cost of investment for materials is pretty low. On average, you're talking one to one and a half hanks of just about any appropriately weighted yarn. If you size up to a worsted weight yarn, you'll need two to three hanks or skeins if you want to follow the pattern stitch for stitch, and you do. If it's your first time working from a pattern, I'd recommend finding a DK weight or sock yarn which can be worked to gauge with a 3.5 millimeter needle. Once you've completed your first windward scarf, you'll be ready to experiment, but cut yourself some slack if you're just starting out. Let's look at some examples. Here we have three windward scarves knitted up at various weights and gauge. The middle scarf is the one my cousin made using the exact yarn and gauge recommended by the pattern. The one on the right was knitted on a US 5, that's 3.75 millimeter needles, and the one on the left was knitted on US 7, that's a 4.5 millimeter needle. As you can see, the weight of the yarn and the gauge of the needle has a big impact on the final results. Let's look at some key factors which make this pattern so wonderful for the advanced beginner. Heidi's design notes are detailed and clear. From the very beginning, she summarizes the flow of the pattern, which is helpful to understand how you create all those directional and textural changes. She provides line-by-line -line instruction, a diagram, and charts as new sections are added. You start out with a relatively short cast on edge, and then you almost immediately start creating these wonderful biases using increases and decreases. You will need a number of stitch markers because each of these joins, every time that you see the stitch change, that is a new stitch marker. It looks really complicated, doesn't it? Believe me, it's not. As Heidi calls out in her notes, the pattern is augmented by charts and a diagram. These are broken down into sections which make their own mini project. Think of it this way. You work the number of stitches in a section detailed in the line-by-line -line instructions. The section is summarized in a chart which also corresponds to a section in the diagram and that section in the diagram corresponds to a section between your stitch markers. So basically, once you get started, all of these things line up to help you get through the pattern. Stitches and Skills Here you'll see the full suite of stitches and skills used in the pattern. It looks like a long list, but we'll break it down and you'll soon realize you probably have all the necessary knowledge in your fingertips. The first four are all easy, right? Bind off, cast on, decrease, and established. Two of those are just shorthand for pattern instructions. If we grab the bulk of the remaining stitches and techniques, you'll find you know them all. Garter stitch, that's knitting all rows, easy peasy. Knits and pearls, gotcha. Marker talk, now that's all about placing markers and slipping markers, all right. Stockinette and reverse stockinette, 
no matter how you say it, that's knits on one side and purls on the other. Increase, stitches, and together. That's just more of those shorthand notes. Look at that. We're 90% of the way there, and I bet you know how to do all those things. What remains now are the increases and decreases. We have make one left, make one right, and purl front and back. That's it. Those are the three. If you're not familiar with these stitches, I'll put links in the description as well as a card up there in the right hand corner. Once you've seen them done, you'll find them very straightforward. Now, you could knit front and back if that's more familiar to you, but I recommend taking the time to learn these stitches if you haven't already. As you can see from the worsted weight sampler, the make one stitches create a lovely trellis stitch which grows from the bias like subtle vines. It's really pretty and I find it much prettier than knit front and back. I'm sure Heidi does too and that's why she put it in her pattern. Decreases. The decreases are slip slip knit, purl two together, and knit two together. You don't see those last two in the list but their parts are in there. Together, purl, you get it. Here you'll see a sample of the directions written out. Let's read it, reading what can be read from this little snippet. So we purl to the first stitch before the next marker. We purl front and back, that adds a stitch. We slip the marker, we knit a stitch, we make a stitch, yada yada yada, reduce a stitch with a slip slip knit, slip the marker, purl front and back, adding a stitch, purl to the next marker, slip marker, knit two together, reducing a stitch, and so on and so on and so on. So you get a sense of the pattern and once you understand the language, it goes from looking like ancient Greek to a clear set of instructions. How it works up. Let's get back to the samples. We'll focus on the two scarves made with scraps, or in the case of the first scarf, unicorn tails. Unfolding the scarf, you can see what happens when you make dramatic shifts in color. The stripes stretch and bend as if by magic. Each stripe represents a full unicorn tail worked without changing yarn. The pattern emerges as you add new sections and work your increases and decreases according to the pattern. This rainbow scarf was started with discontinued yarn for which I had the majority of a hank left over. This is a great pattern for discontinued yarn where you just don't have enough to make a whole other project. You get a feel when you're using a large sample of exactly how the pattern works up. Because all of this was made without changing yarns. Right here, way down here on the end, this is where I changed yarns. So this gold color doesn't get introduced until right there. Now think about that. All of this was worked gives you a sense that we're working towards this edge, which becomes the straight edge, right? This becomes the neck edge. And then here I ran out of cold, so I go on to the next one. For a beginner especially, what you end up getting is something that makes you feel remarkably competent. And I am all for a pattern which empowers the maker. Um, patterns should leave you in a place where once you're done with them, you want to go out and try again, right? You want to try a new pattern. You want to expand your skill even further. And I really feel that Winward does that. Stockinette, garter, reverse stockinette. in one color change. Trust me, you can do this. Make things, take the time. That's why we're all here together. And then when you give them, that is a gift of that time. It is a gift of that moment so that you can surround yourself with all of these stories. I love being surrounded by stories.